Okay, I have tried to make this more simple and to the point so that it becomes uh, so that you can actually think of this as a template for article writing and you can place the article that you've already written onto this template and uh, rewrite it again. I feel that if you follow this, that any article uh, based on any subject for any kind of purpose, for any kind of audience, if you can follow this, you should be able to write it well. Okay, so let's see how this goes. All right, so kind of articles that you need to write, we know this. I'll just go through this very quickly. You can write for a school magazine, a newspaper report, a newspaper article, website article, blog. It can be a website contribution. No matter what it is, no matter uh, where you want to write it, where you want to submit it, where it is going to be placed, doesn't matter. The format still remains the same, okay? Mm -hmm. So... First and foremost, when you are given an article to write, try to identify the audience and you'll be given this by your examiner. So you will be asked to write. Judy, can you just give me one minute, darling? I'll be okay. right back. I'm sorry, darling, working from home, okay. you know, there's so many things that need to be done. Okay, mm -hmm. so coming back to what we were talking about. So your uh, examiners are going to tell you who you need to write the article for. So you already will have your audience um, specified by the examiner. So if they say that you have to write the, uh, the article for uh, a school magazine, and it's mostly that, then you know that you are writing it for children who may be your age, right? Because uh, uh, this is what, uh, uh, if they say it's for a school magazine, it's expected that it's going to be for children your age. So now you know your audience, you know who you are writing for, who you will be addressing. If it's for a school magazine, then this is going to dictate your language, tone and vocabulary. So now you know what kind of language to use if it's for a school magazine. You know what tone to use because you know that you are going to reach out to children who will be similar to your age or close to your age. So you will also know what vocabulary to use. It's not going to be a very formal, formal writing. You have to keep a semi-formal register over here because you will be reaching out to uh, children who are uh, of uh, same age. Okay? okay. Now comes audience is done. We have to keep one thing in mind and that's the purpose. Remember, we always say that whenever we are writing something, we have to know what our purpose is, who our audience is. Based on that, we will always decide on what kind of language, vocabulary, or register to use, right? This is something that we are always talking about in every class. So we know what the audience is for the article. The purpose we'll discuss in the slides to come. Now, before we talk about the purpose, we want to know the structure. And as usual, the structure is the title, body, introduction, uh, the title, uh, by, that means who has written the article, then comes the introduction, the body, and conclusion. So I'm not going to elaborate on the body because the body depends on um, how we chalk out the introduction. We'll just very quickly go through all of this, okay? And do ask me if I'm going, do tell me if I'm going too fast or if you don't understand anything, you can ask me to stop and repeat, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so moving on. Now we'll take all of this one at a time, okay? And we'll talk about this. So first and foremost, as I said, your structure is title 
uh, we'll take this first. Let's talk about the title. So now your title must be interesting. Try using alliteration. I want you to note both of these points down so that you have it written. And this is what you're going to do. So now when you're going to rewrite your article, uh, become a vegetarian, you will think, is your title interesting? Can you use alliteration to make it sound a little bit better? Okay. If you feel that you can make your title a little bit better by changing it, you will change it. All right. And then you'll rewrite. Okay. Okay. All right. Moving on. Now, again, I'll go back to the previous slide. We talked about title. So now we know that the title has to be interesting. We know that we should we should try to use alliteration. Not necessarily that you will always have to use it or you can come up with it at the spur of the moment. But try to use an alliteration. It makes your titles always uh, interesting. Okay. Now we want to move on to buy. So here. This you must write after the title and keep your full name, uh, write it, write your full name for it. Uh, it should be placed on the top left or bottom left of the page. Okay. Mm. Done. So now we've talked about title. We've talked about buy. We want to talk about introduction. And over here, we are going to do understand introduction and conclusion in detail. Okay. Okay. So introduction. Now take a look at this. Your introduction, again, as I mentioned earlier, could be in three to five sentences. This is good enough if you can bring it in three to five sentences. Okay. Now mm -hmm. sentence one is the hook or the opening sentence. So your opening sentence should be so interesting that we can call it a hook. Anything in your first sentence, if it is interesting, you will be able to hook your reader. That means you will be able to catch their attention. Now they want to read on. The moment they read the first sentence, they should like it enough so that they can read on. So you have to hold on to their interest from the very first sentence, okay? So now, how can you make your first mm -hmm. sentence interesting? These are the things that we want to talk about. Your opening sentence mm -hmm. can be a question. So you can start with this. Did you know? And then you can put up whatever the topic of the sentence or uh, um, the article is, whatever that complements or that helps you to explain the article uh, better. Okay? So you can write, you can start with a question. Now, if you don't want to start with a question, another thing is an arresting statement. That means a statement which is going to spark your interest. So if I'm going to talk about pollution and uh, plastic pollution, if I say, um, say, if I'm talking about uh, how important it is to recycle or everyone should recycle, if that's the topic of my article, then I can write, it is not children who need to be educated about recycling, it is the grown-ups who ought to know better. So I have put up my uh, opening statement here where I am trying to grab your attention by saying that people say children uh, do not know how important it is. So people are educating children. I am uh, spending um, many hours set aside during the week in order to educate my school children uh, about recycling. And this is something which is true one of the children stood up and said that, Miss, even if I am being able to, I follow what you say, my family does not. So my family is not uh, dividing the bins accordingly. They are not separating the waste accordingly. So how do I do? How can I help my family understand this? So you see, this is uh, true that even if we want to educate our children in order to uh, help them understand the importance of recycling, it is still the grown-ups who need to take that first step because if they do not start this practice at home, it doesn't work for the children, right? Mm -hmm. So this is an, a statement that I can start with. Now, I don't want to start with a question. I don't want to start with such a statement. I can start with some shocking information or an interesting statistic, okay? What can that be? The unreleased energy contained in dustbins each year could power a television for five thousand hours shocking or not 
right? Interesting, a very interesting statistic over here. So you can start with this. Again, if you don't want to follow this, you can start with the relevant quotation. We live in a disposable society. This was uh, a quotation uh, and it says, we live in a disposable society. It's easier to throw things out than to fix them. You can start with this quote or a quote of any kind, not necessarily this one, right? Your opinion or an anecdote. Instead of writing anything else, if you still want to start with what you feel, then you can start with, I have found it saves money to reuse the plastic containers. Now, this is your opinion that you have said, and you can talk about this. So you see, when you are writing an introduction, we are talking about how to chalk out your introduction beautifully in three to five sentences. First sentence can be any one of these that you have seen here. Anything that you like to add, you can just use that kind and you can put it up in your article. So your article was become a vegetarian. You can start with a question. You can start with an interesting statement. You can start with some shocking information. You can start with a quotation. You can look up on the net and see what people have to say about being a, becoming a vegetarian, right? You can also start with your opinion saying that why uh, maybe you have discovered in recent years that becoming a vegetarian is um, a better option, right? So this is your opinion. Instead of um, starting with this, the last one, it's always preferable to start with a rhetorical question. Rhetorical question means that you will ask a question. It's an obvious question. We don't want you to answer it because everyone knows the answer, right? That is always a very nice way of opening up your article, okay? So now, mm -hmm. this is the first sentence. Choose any one of these, any one of these uh, options, and you use it for become a vegetarian, your article, okay? So when you're rewriting the article, you will be rewriting based on exactly the things that I'm giving you here, all right? So you can start with a question, you can start with a statement, you can start with a statistic, you can start with a quotation, or even your opinion, okay? Okay. Moving on. So second sentence. Second sentence, you mention why are you writing this article? Now, when you are writing an article, these are the reasons behind it. This is the purpose of your writing an article. Your purpose could be to inform. When I'm writing this article to inform, after this first opening sentence, I will go to the second sentence. And if it's to inform, I will write, this article will tell you how to do whatever, whatever the topic requires. Or this article will help, will tell you why it is important uh, for you to become a vegetarian. If you're writing a review of a show or a book, you can write it like this. This article will tell you about the show. These are all examples of your second sentence, okay? If you're writing to argue, you will say, this article will help you to understand why school uniforms are important or why you should wear school uniforms or why you should support the cause or why you should become a vegetarian now. So this is my uh, point my sentence when I want to argue. When I want to persuade, I can say this article will help you to know how to get good grades or this article will help you to know how important it is to leave the meat and embrace the vegetables. So I'm going to, this is my purpose. My purpose is to persuade you today to tell you that you should not eat meat and you should eat vegetables only. Okay, you can also start the second sentence by in this manner. I am here to help you understand how you can revise for exams successfully. You can also write it in this way. This article is in favor of recycling and I'm going to tell you today how to recycle. So my article will help you to understand how you can recycle successfully. I can write any of these sentences in order to show you that I'm going to persuade you now and uh, make you believe in what I believe, okay? If I'm going to give an advice in this article, then I will write this article will help you to decide on whatever, maybe your future line of study or um, why you should follow, uh, why, sh why you should take subjects in humanity, why you should be a pure science student, so on and so forth. You can, uh, if you're talking about becoming a vegetarian and you want to give advice to people, tell them that they should become vegetarians, then in this case, you can write, 
this article will help you to decide um, uh, why you should become a vegetarian. So over here, you'll be giving them advice. You should do this. You should do that. This having meat is uh, something that you should stay away from because it has problems. Now, when you're writing to advice, you should always uh, not you should never use, um, you know, dictating words. Do not tell them what to do. If you're writing for advice, tell them what could be done. They have a choice. You're giving them an advice. So you can tell them how good it is or how bad it is for them. You can tell them that in your opinion, this is what should be done. This is what you could do. But you can never say that do this because I say this is right. Or you should, uh, this is what you should have done. You are very dumb. You do not understand. That's not good. So, you know, these kind of articles when you're writing an advice, you should always try to put in things where you say um, that, you know, this is my opinion and I'm going to tell you what is right and what is wrong. And I expect you to be smart enough to understand and take my advice. Got it? Yeah. Okay, so quick recap. First second was, first sentence was the hook where you can use any of these kind of statements over here. Second sentence is the purpose. So I will let the readers know what my purpose is in this second sentence. Okay? Okay. Coming to the third sentence. Third sentence is the outline of the article. This third sentence is going to be where you will mention three points that you want to talk about in the body. So the body of the, the, um, the article will start from after this sentence. Darling, can you hold on for just a minute more? Hang on. My uh, children are saying something to me. Just one more minute, dear. Okay. I'm back, my dear. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we have our school holidays on from today. So everybody is in a festive mode, you know, because we've uh -huh. got um, our uh, um, Eid holidays uh, are on now. That means that we've got a huge uh, religious festival on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So um, everything has closed down here. All the classes have gone off from today and all the kids are free at home. So... <laughs> So, all right, coming back to what we were saying, that your third sentence of the introduction is actually the outline of your article. So say if you're talking about becoming a vegetarian and you've written in your second sentence that you want to argue that uh, eating meat should not be done and you should eat more vegetables or you should completely stop eating meat. So now, what are you going to do? You are going to mention three points why it is important to uh, not eat meat and to have vegetables. You want to talk about uh, maybe two points of how eating meat is not good and one point of uh, how eating is still okay. So now you have to organize your article in this format so any three points not necessarily you are writing an argumentative uh, article over here it depends on what your examiner has asked you to do if you have been asked to argue on the point that becoming vegetarian is important that is where you use the purpose which is to argue if you have been asked to cite your opinion or give advice as to why people as you know saying that people should become vegetarians then again, the three points that you mentioned over here should be in favor of 
not eating meat and uh, having vegetables instead okay okay so the third sentence of your introduction will be talking about these three just write in one sentence uh, the three points that you want to talk about in the body based on these three points just based on these three points your next three paragraphs are going to be written so i'm not going to tell you how these three paragraphs are going to be written because you will have to elaborate on the point whatever those points may be okay so mm -hmm. say for example if i tell you that uh, school uniforms are important and children should wear uh, school uniforms in school and i'm going to argue for the topic so my article here today is going to tell you why it is important to wear school uniforms um, and then i'm going to say it is important to wear school uniforms because uh, it um, gives the children an identity it uh, creates a sense of belonging uh, it also uh, helps to reduce the differences between classes so i put in three points here this is my uh, third sentence now if i'm going to write the article my first paragraph is going to be where i'm going to explain how it is how it gives the children an identity so children are wearing school uniforms they belong to a particular school this particular school has a special design for the uniforms when children wear this uniform outside people can recognize them immediately so you know this gives them um, an identity they are uh, known that uh, just by the look just by the look of the uniform which school they belong to right my second point my second paragraph would be elaborating on how um, it i forgot what was the second point i said so say okay so i remember the third point that i just mentioned and that was uh, we want to talk about how it reduces the social class difference you know when children are wearing uniforms so when i'm elaborating on this point i'm going to say that uh, you know children come from different walks of life when they come to when they, when they join a school so they might be from different social classes if they are not wearing school uniforms then what they wear um, and the kind of clothes that they wear the brands that they may be wearing all of these will actually show a huge difference in class so we don't want that we want to keep all of the children at the par in the same line and together so in this case wearing school uniforms does not tell you who comes from which walk of life right who comes from which background over here this totally eliminates the class difference in uh, uh, in the society when the children are getting together in a school all wearing the same uh, clothes all wearing the same design and the same colors right so when i'm writing this kind of an article my first point was when i say that it, it gives the children a sense of belonging my second point i remember it helps the children uh, work as a team so now second point if i say that it uh, helps the children work as a team just by wearing the same uniform how can you work as a team you see it gives you a sense of being one because all of you look the same all of you are wearing the same kind of clothes so there is no difference between you and me so in this case it gives me a sense of being part of a team i can work together as a team with everybody because we all look the same in the third paragraph i'm mentioning how it eliminates a class difference and people do not need to show which walk of life or which uh, uh, class or which part of society are they coming from so it's putting everybody in the same platform they can all um, look the same and behave the same see so this is how if i put up an outline there uh, mentioning three points i'm going to elaborate on those three points in these three paragraphs okay now comes the body so body i'm not going to elaborate on this because i just explained it to you that we this you just have to use your three uh, points that you put up in introduction and you divide it in three paragraphs and then you explain those three points okay conclusion this is again the important part the conclusion will be in two parts part one is where you restate you um, emphasize you talk about again what you said in the introduction so restatement of your purpose stating what you said in the beginning okay 
So how can it be? How can you restate? How can you actually say what you started in the beginning without repeating it? You can say it as this. So say if you want to end up uh, on a positive note, then you can say this is surely a recipe for success. Whatever you say up there, if you want to end up in a positive note, you can use this kind of a sentence. If you want to put up a warning, you can say, if we do not act now, it will be too late. Similarly, I don't want to put it up as a warning. I want to put up it. I want to talk about, I want to place an appeal for action. So I'm going to write my article and I'm going to, again, restate what I said in the beginning and I'm going to use it as an appeal. I'm going to say, we must act now we must act quickly, otherwise it will be too late, otherwise I, our planet will be destroyed. If I'm talking about plastic pollution, this is how I can put up my first part of the conclusion. Now, if I don't want to put up anything of these and create such drama, I can still write in a very simple way saying that I hope my article has helped you to understand how important it is that you do not use plastic because if you do, this will bring us to our end. Okay, so I will put it, I can put it up simply as well. I can put it up in a positive way. I can put it up as a warning. I can write an appeal. Or I can just simply state what my article, I hope my article has been able to help you. I hope my article has been able to explain this to you. Or I hope my article has been, uh, I hope I have been able to persuade you to believe in this, this, this. Okay, very simply, I can put it up in the first part, right? Second part is going to be the future statement. So after you say a positive statement like this, or a warning, or an appeal, or if you're just simply putting this up here, second part would be a future statement. So a question for people to think about, couldn't that be the best outcome of them all? So if we can say, for example, I say that I hope I have been able to convince you to um, reduce the use of plastic or to give up using plastic bottles. And when I want to, after saying that, I can say, couldn't this be the best outcome of all? If people can just stop using plastic, then we will be able to help the marine life. Our world will be able to live longer. So could this not be the best option or the best outcome of all? Then we want to talk about, say, I don't want to say this. I can put up a future statement as a vivid image. So I can say, just take a simple step forward and you can change the future. So I can say that, you know, just take a step forward because in my article, I have uh, explained to you that I need you to stop using plastic bottles. So once mm -hmm. I say all of this, I put up as first part of my statement i can say that this is if everyone can give up using plastic bottles this is surely a recipe for success and then i can end by saying just taking a simple step forward we can change the future so you see how beautifully your conclusion is designed so mm -hmm. it, all you have to do is just put it break up your conclusion in these two parts and if you can either put it up as a question or a vivid image or a link with the opening, though not repeating the wording. So your link to the opening, the introduction, but you will not repeat what you said in the introduction. So how are you going to place it? You're going to write like this. Perhaps the question that we asked in the beginning was a wrong one. Maybe we could have asked. So if I am, say, starting with the article um, asking that uh, how many plastic bottles do you... Uh, use or how many soda or how many cokes do you have in a day say i ask that i start my article with that that means i'm going to talk about how coke is being sold in plastic bottles how these plastic bottles are destroying uh, planet earth so in the end i'm going to say that you know we must stop using plastic bottles and then again i can say this is surely a recipe for success and instead of saying just a simple step i can say Perhaps the question that I asked in the beginning was a wrong one. Maybe I should have asked. Um, maybe I should have asked. How many plastic bottles are thrown are thrown away in a day? Okay. If I do that, 
then if you just look at the statistic and figures you will be able to understand that it's a huge number of plastic bottles that are being thrown out every day and it's only in one day that we'll be talking about that so what happens is you will be able to calculate yourself see this is why i'm saying it has to be a future statement you will be able to calculate yourself how many plastic bottles are thrown in a week in a month in a year and how fast marine life and planet earth is going to be destroyed because plastic bottles are being thrown in huge numbers every day okay so this is how you want to end your uh, article so again just a quick recap your conclusion should be done in two parts one is restatement of your purpose stated in the beginning second your future statement when you are writing about the first part and you are re using restatement you can do it in a positive way you can do it as a warning you can do it as an appeal for action requesting people to stop think and then do whatever they are doing you can simply state that your article hopefully has helped them either to understand either to you hope your article has convinced them or hope your article has been able to persuade them to do this 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 and then finally you end with your final sentence either by uh, putting up a question for the people to think about or you draw a vivid image uh, which is uh, which shows promise for the future or you um, write something which you can link to the introduction okay